Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another video um, about Onshape. And I thought I'd put this video together today because um, I think it's really important that you understand um, how to create a professional looking rendering um, using Onshape. Um, now, the colors that we can pick in um, Onshape when we're drawing our model and our assemblies, they look pretty good. Okay, so they'd be okay for uh, maybe some of your sketch pages or some of your development pages to look at color schemes. But when we get down to the final uh, project and the final pictures of the project, we want to try and get it to look as real as possible. And Onshape is really good with that because it has uh, a rendering app that we can get from the Onshape App Store and we can use it to add uh, real life renderings and materials to our product. So I'll show you what it looks like um, sort of a before and after. Um, I have changed the colors. So this is a before, which you're familiar with already. And if we look at the um, after effect, again, it might take a little bit of time to load in because it's a, an image. You can see there that um, I've applied a, a gloss paint finish. Um, I've put, the top here as uh, a metal component, also a stainless steel bearing in there as well. Uh, I've put a shadow in, and you can really see on, on the corners here where the light is reflected, it looks real. Um, and that's what we want to try and achieve um, with your drawings as well, to make it look as real as possible. And it's quite simple to do. So let's get started and let's show you um, how to do this. First thing, I'm going to apologize in advance because sometimes with these rendering packages, they can run a bit, a little bit slow. So if they are running slow, I'll just pause the video and then I'll just start it again. Also, apologies if the uh, internet just breaks up um, halfway through um, and I have to refresh my screen. Um, so let's get started. So with, let's just move this out of the way because I need, so with the, um, that's fine there. With the on shape, what we need to do is we need to first get the app. So to do that, you just go into this little app plus tool here and you'll go to go to App Store. So you click that. And when we go to the App Store, we can see that we get um, several apps. Okay, and the one you want, you want, the one you want to click is this one here, um, the one with the Formula One car. It's called Reality Server Rendering. Click it. And then there'll be a little, um, this section here, where you get two hours a month for free. Uh, I will already subscribe to it. Two hours should be okay because you'll only do this really at the end of your project. Um, and, um, you know, it's you should know what you're doing by then and hopefully it won't take you very long to do the renderings. Um, so again, it's a good option for free. Um, you know, if we did get to a situation where we needed more time, we could possibly look at uh, buying a package. But for, for the time being, the, uh, the free option is fine. So that would say subscribe. You just click that and you go subscribe. Uh, when you subscribe to it, what you then do is it will then um, appear. So when you go back to this plus tool here, you can see that um, where it goes, add application, it'll appear here now in this reality server. So to get it started, what we do is we just click it. And what will happen is that will take a little bit of time just to load up. Okay, and here we go, it's loaded here. So this is the window here, which we do to the reality server. Um, and what it done, does, it sort of runs its own server to help the renderings. So to get it started, you can see that I've got two hours there. I think I've got, I've used about 15, 20 minutes. Um, but first thing you need to turn it on. And what happens then is then the server will start. So you can see here it's starting, it's in progress. I'm just gonna pause the video there just to see if it takes longer than expected. And okay, we are now um, up and running uh, in the reality server. So you can see here, it's going, it's turned on. Um, if we click create here, what it's gonna allow us to do is we're going to allow us to create a rendering. Now for today's tutorial, um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the assembly. Um, okay. And because I'm, I'm opening the fidget spinner, it will it'll open up my assembly for a fidget spinner, which is this one here. Now, tessellation means that um, how fine do I want that final rendering to be? Um, normally, what I would do is if I was setting it for a final picture of my design, I would set fine. Um, and that will set a really crisp and fine rendering. And that's the one I used for my previous rendering that I showed at the start of the video. Um, but for this exercise, to speed things up a little bit, um, I'll just put default like that. And then we click start. And this is the bit that might take a bit of time um, because it's got to bring the model in and it's got to convert it um, into that rendering. So you can see here it's, it's working. Depending on your internet connection, it could take a couple of minutes um, to do. So we'll just pause the video. And what's happened now is it's imported our model uh, into the environment here. And we can see that from the drawing below, so we've gone from the assembly here to the picture at the top. It smoothed things out a lot more. Okay, so you can see it smooth things. You can have a look around it like you would normally. Um, just click and roll it um, like that. Okay, so let's get a good view first. So what I would suggest you first is get into a view that you like because this is the view that we can save. So just click and rotate it. Then what we need to do is we need to set a uh, an environment um, so what environment is basically is what the background of that product product will be. So um, this will be sat inside this environment here. And then all the reflections that are visible on, on this product will be leaves and trees. Um, and the lighting will also be affected. Uh, this lighting here will also be apparent uh, in this scene as well. So what we'll do is I'm just going to have a scroll down you can see there's loads of different environments and a lot of this sometimes is just trial and error it's just dropping one in um, seeing what works seeing what doesn't work and the more you probably use it um, the better knowledge you'll get of knowing um, what environments look good for renderings and what environments don't look very good for renderings um, so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pick one let's have a look Let's have a look. Um, let's try this one here. I haven't seen this one before. Um, it may work, it may not work. So what you do is click it and you just drag it in. And what it does, it does the, it does change it slightly. It renders it to, um, to look like that effect. Now it looked like it hasn't done anything there. Um, but what you need to do then is you need to actually, once you've dragged it in, you come to here. And we need to turn the shadows on for the background because they're currently turned turned off. So you go um, this one here where it's ground enabled. So again, I was just clicking that ground enable, ground position, and you just click turn those on. And what that'll do is that'll start to put some shadows under my work. So it just gives me a bit of depth um, on my drawing here so you can see it looks like it's floating now at this point as well if you wanted to you could also click that and you could change the background color of your uh, background so I click there and it changes it to gray so again you can choose it to what you want to change it if, if you want to leave it white gray use a slider you know to get like maybe a light gray so just a subtle color there so what I'll do is we'll probably just leave it at that light gray um, like that. So when I'm happy with that, I just close that. Um, and you can see if I just then select another one. So let's pick another one just to show you the difference. Let's go something a bit brighter. Uh, let's go for this one here. I mean, I did that before into the Kira Sunset, I think. Uh, let's try Floral Road and see what happens with that. Is there any difference? So you can see there that's gone a lot brighter because it's a brighter scene. Um, so again, it's just a case of finding things that you are happy with um, that work for, for what you're trying to achieve. So let's just go back to, let's try this hotel room that might be indoors. What does that look like? Okay, that looks good. I like that one because we've got a bit of, a bit of shadow happening, a bit of light. Okay, so that looks pretty good, that one. So again, it's just a trial error to what you think looks 
realistic. Then the next step um, is going into materials. Okay, and there are lots of materials. Okay, the material li library is massive. Um, you can pretty much get anything you want in the material library. So you can get transparent netting, you can get patterns. It, it's endless. Um, you know, it's endless. So let's have a look. Um, to search them, what you can do is you can just type in here. So if I, this one here, sort of paint metallic. So if I just typed in there paint, okay, it'll bring all the paint ones up like that. Uh, if I typed in plastic, it'll do the plastic ones. So again, the good thing is to do is just, just scroll through them, have a look, see what looks good, trial and error, um, and just see what works for you and, and, and your model. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong um, answer here. It's just a case of what you think looks good. Um, so it's personal opinion, really. Um, I'm going to just see what this one looks like. Again, it may not look very good. So you just click it. And then what you do is you just drag it onto the area. So this purple area here. And then you let go. And what will happen then, that will then convert that area. With a little bit of patience, it will render it into that pattern. You can see there it doesn't look very good. So again, um, you can change that. So let's have a look something a bit better. So I might go for these metallic paints. So let's see what that looks like. Let's try that red one. Okay, so you can see that looks a lot better. We're getting some nice reflections. Um, Again, if we rendered it with a fine render, you get even more detail. Um, so you get even more detail. So let's go for maybe a red, and then let's click a. Let's keep in the same theme here because it appears that these these work. So let's maybe try blue, and then I'll put the blue where the yellow area is, and change that now to blue. So let's have a look what happens there. Okay, you can see that's changed that bottom area to blue. Let's just click off and just see. Yeah, it looks looking nice, looking good. Um, and you can roll your mouse in to get a good look to see what it looks like. And, you know, this lovely gloss finish here, lovely sort of reflection there, um, making it look like a real product. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this cap area here. So I need some form of metal. Um, so let's just type in, uh, let's see if we can just type in stainless steel, does that come up? No. Okay, well, there's some metals there. So again, metals can be quite funny because they can either look really good or look too shiny. So let's, let's go for one here and let's put that on the bearing and just see what that looks like so what we're trying to achieve with this is like a real nice the reflection on the bearing to make it look like um, metal so mm, it's okay probably could do better let's have a little look what else we got here um, let's have a look for, see what comes up. So that's just categorizes all the metals. Um, I think chrome might be too shiny, but let's see what happens. Let's put it on, on the top of the cap. If I want to say that was a chrome bit that I held onto while I was spinning around. Okay, you can see there, the chrome is, looks good. Um, and what's nice about this as well, what you can see now is the, when I talked about the environment being, a, I think it was a hotel room we selected. So you can see that the reflection in this chrome part is the hotel room. 
So that's what I mean by this is now as if it's sat in a hotel room and the reflections off this chrome part are being reflected from the hotel room. Um, so I'm just going to change that, that bearing part because I don't really like it like that. I might just go for a brush metal to see if that just dulls it down a little bit because I want the contrast of the, the darker metal part with the... Um, now, again, that doesn't look correct. Again, let's see if anything else can improve. Um, so there's loads of cool ones. Yeah, there's loads of, loads of good stuff that you can just spend some time seeing what works, what doesn't work um, for your design. But I'll just try one more. Let's have a quick look. There's like hammered patterns, you know, there's metal plates. It's endless, it's endless. So I might just go for that one. Okay, that looks better. That looks better. So, what you can do now is once you're happy with that, you can, um, looks like it's got some red, this red line here is the reflection from the paint. So it's even included that on there. Once you're happy with that, what you can do is you can get into a view you want. So whatever view you want to do your presentation as. So let's say I want to, like a view like that, it's almost it's showing like that. Um, then it's just a simple case of just then render it to a, to a file. So to do that, it's rendered to disk. Okay. And on here, it's going to ask you um, what ratio. So that's the view I want to do it. Okay. So that's the actual view I want right now. Um, so from view, um, again, this is all stuff you don't need to change. Format's JPEG, that's fine. Quality here, again, we can ramp that up to production. That's like the best quality you can have. The higher the quality, the longer the render time. Um, and then we'll just click render. And what will happen then is this little bar will run across and it will render our design. So I'll just pause the video uh, and then we'll look at the final product at the end. Okay. What we've done now is I've restarted the video again, and basically that took about um, eight to ten minutes to render. So that should be now rendered and finished. So let's have a look at it. Let's move this out of the way first. Actually, looking at it now, what I've done is I've actually rendered it to the wrong place. So apologies for that. So when you come to render it, if you click here, rather than clicking render to disk, click render to on shape. Um, I must have overlooked that. Uh, when you render to on shape, it keeps it actually in on shape. So let's do that option. Everything else is the same from view, JPEG. Um, and let's go to production. And then we'll just click render. And again, let's give it some time to do that. Okay, again, that took some amount of time, um, around about eight to ten minutes for the rendering. Um, apologies for telling you that it was render it to disk, but it is render to on shape. Well, we can now see that when we've done that, uh, a little tab appears down here, and we can then open that up. Um, and what that will do is that will open our rendering, um, save as a JPEG. So you can just go here, right click, save image as and save it as a JPEG, then you can use it in your presentations. So you can see the one I've, did, I've done um, previously there. That's the one with the finer rendering. Um, you can see that it's a lot smoother, um, but this one is done, has been done using the default rendering, which is still pretty good um, and still very good for a, a final drawing. So I hope that video gets you on the path to being able to render um, your assemblies. Um, so any drawing you do now, you can also render. Thank you.